Tubi fam, it's Lynn here. I took a 7 day cruise before arriving in Venice. This was my last stop before heading home. I was in Venice for 2 days. It's such a short amount of time so I have to try to see as much as I can. Don't forget to check out all the yummy local food I ate during my time in Venice after this video. Okay, let's get started. Free bus shuttle. Once you get out, just follow these people to Porto. I don't think we're gonna fit. The water bus is 8 euros for a one way ticket into San Marco Square. This machine is very slow and you don't just slide it in and out apparently you just stick it in and wait for it you have luggages with you you gotta pay three euro more before the water tax there isn't any room for you to put your luggage since you have to pay an extra fee for having luggage there should have been a place to store your luggage Ah, my hubby is sleeping I love this hotel. It was away from all the crowded streets. The only downside was that it was a long walk to get to with our luggage. The staff spoke English and was very friendly and helpful. Oh yeah, and they don't have any elevators. They will carry your luggage for you all the way up and down to your room. I was very grateful for that. The room is very clean, no mold or odd smells. This is our hotel in Venice. I thought this was a mirror. Oh, <laughs> no. The hotel offers a welcome drink and free bottled waters. That's convenient. For our one night stay, it was 136 euros plus a 7 euro city tax charge. Here's a closet. There's our bed. It was on the third floor, so I'm glad they brought our luggage up for us. I am already exhausted from having to drag the luggage from the water bus. Here's our view. Palazzo Vittori was built in the second half of the 13th century. They have done a lot of remodeling since then. This place is really well maintained. Part of the hotel was the free breakfast. It was amazing. Just look at the spread. The view was awesome and it was really relaxing since nobody else woke up early to eat breakfast. I totally recommend staying here if you're visiting Venice and want to stay for a night. It's my last day and Venice and then I pretty much walk around today and then that's it. I go to a hotel in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. I gotta wake up and go to the airport. It's gonna be a rough night tonight. So far today, Venice is much clearer. The pictures will look so much better today than it was yesterday. Because yesterday was a little foggy and smuggy. So today will be much better. It seems much clearer and like the cloud is much prettier too. So let's see how my pictures for today turned out. Venice has always been on my bucket list of places I must visit and now I'm finally here walking around such a romantic place As a tourist, my perspective, this place is a happy romantic getaway with lots of food and happy people walking around but this is far from the true reality of real locals living in Venice This place was once the most elegant and refined city in Europe and it was a tastemaker in the arts, architectures, and literatures You see lots of people walking around sightseeing in the daytime but once night Falls, the city becomes a ghost town. Many locals have moved away from Venice due to the higher rent costs and perhaps due to the possibility that it's literally sinking into the ground. Venice is now just a glorified one day vacation stop for tourism. Some even call it an expensive theme park. People only stop for a day and are not renting hotel rooms or eating dinners here. All the tourism dollars aren't making a dent in helping with Venice's massive deficit. All these historic buildings need expensive maintenance. They also have to worry about Venice getting flooded every year. The flood barrier that the city was supposed to build has been tied down for many years due to government corruption. With everything Venice has against it, I really hope that people of Italy can come together to save a piece of their history. It would be sad to see Venice as a tourist Disneyland or worse, no longer existing at all. I don't know why, but their fruit jelly candy is so good. It was really expensive candy though. Even though it was pricey, I regret not buying more. Walking alongside the river is beautiful. Ah. This is the 
oldest bridge that crosses the Grand Canal. It was built 800 years ago in the 12th century. This bridge was originally built because of the Rialto market. This bustling and busy market was one of the best sources of revenue and commerce in the 12th century. And the market was called the Rialto market. Hence the current name of the Rialto Bridge. I'm walking on beautiful stones now, but the bridge was first built out of wood in 1181. It kept collapsing due to the weight of crowds. To finally address this issue in 1551, many famous architects like Michelangelo and Jacopo Sansovino submitted their plans for a new bridge. Antonio da Ponte was the lucky winner. And in 1591, the stone bridge was completed. This bridge was still and is an architectural icon of Venice. It's a must-see when you visit. We're walking up the Rialto Bridge and there is a lot of people here today. The hotel told us that Sunday there's going to be a lot of people and that after 7, things will calm down. Hopefully, when everyone leaves, it will be much better. Look at all those people around me. Yay, here's the midpoint of the Rialto Bridge. Let's check out the view from here. down these small alleyways. I think I was scared of myself though. <laughs> Bridge of Size. What a sad name. It was built in 1600 and it's called the Bridge of Size because it was the last thing that prisoners saw before they were hauled off to prison on the other side of the bridge. Because it's built from white limestone and it has a bunch of detailed carvings and sculptures, it's really a pretty bridge. There is only one happy face carved into the bridge and this one is known as the protector of the bridge. Nowadays, legend has it that if you kiss underneath the bridge at sunset while the bells are ringing, that couple will be blessed with eternal happiness and love. If you want a gondola ride, the prices start around 80 euros for 30 minutes. And unlike in the movies or Las Vegas, they don't sing. If you want them to sing, there are special packages that you can buy on top of your gondola ride. I simply was too cheap to ride them. <laughs> they are pretty enough to look at on the bridge. If you choose to ride, don't try to ride them on the Grand Canal as the way can get pretty long. Walk into smaller alleyways so you don't have to wait in the lines. Gondola traffic jam. If you bought something here in Venice, you can get your refund back right away instead of waiting until they mail it back to you. So to do that, it's behind me. I walked to it and it was really simple, but the stores that you buy stuff from, make sure tax refund is from Global Blue because they only service Global Blue customers. Every other one, you just have to do it at the airport like you normally would. Mail it in and wait for your tax refund back. Whereas this one, they'll immediately put in your money. So this place is very convenient. It's right at Gucci. And right across from Gucci is this alleyway. You just go down there. And it's right next to the pharmacy too. Something that's open over there. <clears throat> oh no. Yeah, it looks like the fish part of it is closed. No. Well, not like we could cook. Yeah. That's okay. Fruit and veggies. We can't bring it home. What's that? Lentils. Oh. If you want to check out the market, then come between 7.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. I guess I missed it. Okay, I don't think these giant hands are made during ancient times. When you are walking along, it's really surprising to see these 5,000 pounds giant hands. This is a famous art piece that is called Support, which is created by artist Lorenzo Queen. He built this because he has an important message. If you don't reverse climate change, then Venice will eventually be flooded and completely underwater. The hands were built to make it look like it's holding up a historical hotel so it won't fall into water. The artist also made the 
hands look like children's hands who represents the next generation. I was lucky to get to see them. This art piece has already been taken down. Mark's symbol is a winged lion. This is why you see it everywhere in Venice. Doge's palace is the old home of the ruler of Venice. Doge is similar to a duke and they were elected as rulers for life. It has a long colorful history and has been burnt down, rebuilt, and taken over multiple times since the 19th century. Now it overlooks a lagoon in its trademark Venetian Gothic style and is now a beautiful museum. If you decide to go here on a tour, it has really gorgeous ceilings and architecture and it's filled with secret rooms. You can also see the meeting room where the old Venetian Council government would meet. St. Mark's Basilica, also known as Church of Gold, is a grand opulent church that was finished in 1092. It was actually built to house stolen St. Mark relics from Alexandria by Venetian merchants. They hid the relic with a layer of pork and cabbage leaves. Since Muslims don't touch pork, the guards failed to find the relics in the merchant ship before it sailed away. In 1787, the horses were stolen and carried off to Paris where they were used in the design of Arch de Triumph to carry in 1815, the horses were returned to the original spot, but during the 1980s, the horses were replaced with exact copies due to ongoing damage from the growing air pollution. You can see the original inside the basilica. The outside is made out of marble and it features awe-inspiring paintings and sculptures. Once you proceed inside, it has detailed beautiful gold ceilings. No pigs are allowed inside and don't forget to drop off your backpack or bags down the street nearby before you head into the line. If you want to skip the long line to get in, you can book online in advance for 13 euros. St. Mark's clock tower has been around since the 15th century. The giant figures on top of the tower hits the bell with hammers to signal the passing of an hour. It's crazy to see this live and for this technology to be available 500 years ago. The two guys on top rings the bell. That is crazy. Oh, they're ringing it. You see it? gonna do it they got on her body I'm sorry guys there's no way I'm gonna be doing that <laughs> no way I'm gonna have some nasty dirty bird <laughs> sit on me and poop on me <laughs> so <laughs> I got some other Asian <laughs> person to do it <laughs> on film instead. <laughs> Bell Tower of St. Mark's. It has the Lion of St. Mark's on the top. This is a winged lion that you see everywhere in the city. Sometimes it's holding a Bible or a sword in its paw. There are five bells on top and each bell has a special purpose. Announcing executions, proclaiming session of the Senate, indicating midday, calling members into council meetings, and the biggest rank to mark the beginning and ending of a workday. <laughs> Somebody actually owns 
this whole play once upon a time. I'm glad I'm able to come and see it. I'm glad that I was able to take you guys with me on my journey to Venice. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll vlog next time. Bye!